He's <laughs> bought them five years ago. They don't, they're barely anything now. And I okay. Still... Okay. So I think we are live now. So we can start. We are live on Idajo. So good evening in Europe. Good afternoon in America. I'm very happy to be here with esteemed colleagues and uh, friends and represent uh, Opera for Peace in this evening conversation between conductors on uh, the current situation and the uh, future uh, in the orchestral music field. And I'm finally meeting face to face, as you can say, with colleagues after more than three months of quarantined time in London. So I'm particularly curious and eager to know their views. So first of all, I'd like to welcome uh, Dalia Stasewska, Robert Trevino, and uh, Yadar Benjamini. And I want to compliment everyone because notwithstanding uh, such uh, a sad and unsettling historical moment with uh, this health uh, crisis, there are uh, wonderful news from uh, each of you, starting uh, with the recent important appointments uh, for uh, Dalia, for example, at the head of the Lati Orchestra, starting in the 21-22 season, for Yadar, as the music director of the Detroit Symphony from this coming season, and for Robert with the important and the significant recording release of the complete Beethoven symphonic cycle with his orchestra uh, for Andin Music Label um, in the Beethoven year also, so well done. So let's start our conversation. Uh, first of all, uh, asking where all you are and what uh, have you been doing in the past few months of quarantine? For example, I know that we are all instrumental players as well as conductors. So I suppose music making uh, at home was part of our quotidianity. So maybe it's just interesting to know how we lived the lockdown and quarantine in different parts of the world. So maybe Dalia, ladies first. What can we, what, what, how are you? Well, uh, thank you for having me here. And, um, uh, yeah, well, basically, I've been actually the whole time in Helsinki. I had uh, my last opera performances in uh, Oslo in the end of February, and then I had small break. And just uh, on the week, I had to take off uh, to uh, Spain. Uh, it all kind of exploded, so I I never left anywhere. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, here I am. The first month was uh, quite difficult, uh, I think, for everybody, you know, just watching the news and uh, trying to digest everything what was going on. But I don't know, somehow, somehow when one realized that this is not going to pass so, so fast, I somehow, you know, relaxed in my mind and uh, tried to, to enjoy just this very special special time and being able to, <laughs> to be at home more than ever, seeing my husband more than ever and uh, doing some cooking for him. He has been very, very happy about it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just uh, relaxing reading and it's just so unbelievable just to be able to wake up when you mm -hmm. want and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, make a cup of coffee at 12, 12 a.m., you know, that it's never really possible. So. Yeah, so here we are, and now it's summer holiday. We have a fantastic weather here in Finland. It's really, really, we are blessed with that. And uh, so no snowing lately. <laughs> okay. I think last year it was snowing in June or something like that. It can happen. And uh, yeah, and I think uh, if everything goes well, I can start in uh, August again, uh, conducting uh, in uh, Nordic countries. But about other countries, of course, we will need to see things are changing and moving very, very fast. Yeah, but in terms of music, no? did you play, how, how also in terms of change of rhythm, yeah, working rhythm and music digestion, as I, if, I, if I may say so, no? How do you feel with this situation now? Uh, you mean uh, my private uh, studying? No, no, yes, yes. Well, to be honest, <laughs> It hasn't been the most productive. Time. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So I, I actually, Daniele, I, I need to like here publicly uh, say that uh, 
I've been doing a lot of Sibelius, but more about like background studying because it's uh, it's something that we always lack the time to read, read, read. So I've been doing a lot of Sibelius background uh, studying. I've been studying Italian language for the opera, you know, for the future. So, um, so I've been doing like circulating around the things and just pick up few scores, not not too much, you know, in the in the end, basically just nurturing myself with all the information that I always want to have more time, but but not that much time. And uh, yeah, I unfortunately they haven't been playing either too too much, but uh, we're moving to summer house now in a few days. So I, I will pick up my viola also there again more more actively. So this is <laughs> That's this good. is where I am. Perfect. What about you, Robert? Me? <laughs> I haven't been off during the whole time. Uh, I was in Malmo when uh, the pandemic st uh, started to take root. I was um, arriving in Malmo doing a Stravinsky festival. So we had uh, four concerts in two weeks, four different programs of Stravinsky. So we did La Sac, Petrushka, Firebird Complete, Oedipus. Lenos and like six other things in that time. And we managed to almost finish the, the festival except for the last concert. And then we, uh, the government was looking to shut everything down. But I anticipated that. And I had, when I arrived in, in Malmo the week and a half before the, the close, the shutdown happened, I started going to the, to the government offices and speaking with people about like, what are you planning on doing? I'm sure everyone's going to be shutting down the economy, everything, but what about the orchestra? Do you, are you going to put in like, because Italy had already closed down. Are you going to do like Italy? Or are you going to do something different? And I engaged with them. And, uh, you know, at one point, one of the, the critical conversations said, they said, well, don't worry. We want to keep the orchestra or just close it for a week or, you know, close it for the very beginning. And then we'll open it up as everything gets going again. And, or as everything, we get better information. And I said, well, what information is that going to be that is going to satisfy your need to open the orchestra? And they couldn't really answer that. I said, so why don't we just, cut down the orchestra, cut down what we're doing and do it in the most safe way possible, do something. And we ended up doing, you know, 40 musicians on stage, one three hour rehearsal, live broadcast. And we had been already working on trying to put in a broadcasting system in the, in the hall. So we, we, we immediately put that to use. And then I stayed in, in town for six weeks and we did chamber music concerts and we did orchestra concerts the whole time, all new repertoire that we had, weren't planning to do. And every day we we're changing things. I mean, sometimes we were supposed to do a Schumann first symphony and then the day before the rehearsal, we had to change it to a, to a Mozart symphony because there were, we couldn't have the trombones because they weren't sure about the aerosol of the trombone and things like that. So. It was very, very fluid. Uh, and then as soon as I was finished there, um, I, I got to Spain when they opened up, uh, three days after they opened uh, the borders again. And my Bass National Orchestra, we started, we were the first orchestra in Spain to start working. So we made a deal with the Bass National Television to do eight concerts of one hour each in four weeks and to do them all broadcast on the television for the public. And that's what we've done. And, and actually the last last concert was last Thursday. And we actually had a public there for the first time in Spain, 50 people. And so uh, for me, I've been constantly studying, uh, constantly conducting things I wasn't planning to conduct and uh, trying to help my orchestras navigate this really crazy time. And uh, and spending time talking to colleagues and other people who are looking on how to, to try to navigate these really uncertain times, because I actually I think we did a press conference. But if you give me just like ten more seconds, I'll say we did a press conference announcing next season, and one journalist kept asking the question, "How are you going to? What happens if? What happens if? What happens if?" And at a certain point, I just stopped her and I said, "Look, there are a million ifs." But there's only one overriding principle that we can ascribe to ourselves and to our social contract as an orchestra to the public and also as a conductor to the orchestra. And that is, if you allow three people to assemble, then we will assemble three people. 
and if you allow one person to assemble, we will assemble one person. There is no circumstance where you allow us to have some type of music occur where we won't do something for the public. So if that is a Mahler symphony, wonderful. If that's a Mozart or if that's a Bach or string sextet, it doesn't matter. The point is that music has to continue and you have to find a way to, to, to navigate that. And I think it is freeing in many ways because it allows you to kind of break the entire mold and, and say, well, what can we do? And there's, you know, there's billions of pieces of music you can play. So you just have to stay up at the middle of the night learning the pieces at the last minute. Yeah, but that's very interesting also because you are one of the very few who already started in a way. Yes, mm -hmm. I will. I will start uh, the day after tomorrow in Italy because they opened in Italy on the 15th today. Actually, they they reopened theaters. But it's very interesting because, to me, what is clear is every country has their own rules, and some of the orchestra institutions decide which rule also to follow. Some are more cautious. For example, with the winds, with the wind players, you know how to if to put together winds and uh, strings. No, or 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 to to keep programming separate. So that's very interesting uh, what you ex just experienced. So uh, we we will come back for sure because I have a lot of questions. You know, because uh, you know <laughs> we need to reprogram everything. No, but Yader, tell us about what about you? I know that you traveled the world, notwithstanding the lockdown, for example, in these last months. <laughs> Yeah, first of all, uh, it's, uh, I'm honored to be here among all of you. It's a, it's a big pleasure to come speak uh, about music, about uh, our strange life in this sad moment. No? Uh, yeah, I, I, was, uh, I was in Toronto when, when uh, it happened, this uh, lockdown, and uh, I was over there with all my family. It was supposed that uh, I conduct uh, a couple of concerts uh, with Toronto Symphony, and then uh, after that, uh, with the Canadian Opera, I, I had to conduct uh, AIDA. But uh, <laughs> when I arrived uh, in Toronto, uh, they told me, okay, you have to do quarantine. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. And uh, after four or five days, uh, all the orchestra, the concert hall and uh, all the orchestras and uh, the Canadian opera, everything closed. And uh, I was over there. And uh, the situation here in Italy was uh, so uh, difficult, no? Very difficult. And all, uh, all my, my relatives uh, told me, it's better that you stay over there. <laughs> and then uh, I stayed there with, the, with all my family. And the, the first two or three weeks was uh, also relaxing. I have to, to tell that, uh, okay, I continue to study for my next project, my next sponsor, just for two or three weeks. And uh, after that, uh, it was uh, more and more difficult to, to find the concentration and uh, to study with, without a goal, no? Without, uh, okay, we, we, we go back, but yeah, it's not sure, no? And uh, after three weeks, I stopped to study. And I continued to, to stay with uh, all my family, with my children, uh, to teach uh, music uh, uh, to my daughter that plays trumpet and the piano, and uh, stay with my, my son that uh, try, I tried to understand what happened in uh, his computer. <laughs> and uh, I cook. I cook every day for all my family. I loved cooking. I stayed with the, with my wife, and uh, that's it. Two months over there, and then uh, uh, I never I never played uh, my old clarinet. Mm -hmm. Just one time, just one time, and uh, then I I go back here in Italy, and I'm here uh, from uh, one month. And uh, now here is, is better, but uh, I'm not studying really. I'm just, I'm listening a, a lot of music. It's strange for, for, uh, for me because uh, I'm, I'm usually, uh, sadly, I, I listen the music that I have to study. And now I'm listening the music uh, for pleasure or for discover different, uh, different uh, pieces. 
especially now that we are talking about a, a new reprogrammation <laughs> of uh, our future concepts. But uh, it was a, a very, very strange, uh, strange time. But I appreciated to stay with uh, my family, all my family for three months. Strange for my wife, but for now it's good. <laughs> and that's it. And now we are thinking about our future. Uh, but I'm not so lucky like, like you. I have to, to, to wait uh, uh, till uh, August for my next project because uh, uh, it was supposed that uh, I had the concert in Japan, but it's impossible for Italian people to go over there. And uh, it was supposed that uh, I had uh, a concert in Pesaro, but uh, now the, the, the Rossini Opera Festival uh, will be a little smaller, no? And they canceled my, my Stabat Mater. And uh, so I, I have to wait uh, this uh, concert that uh, in, in Arena di Verona, very, in, in a very strange situation, that's it. And, uh, and then in September, I will go back in uh, Detroit. But I have to, uh, I will have to do quarantine over there. And I have to, uh, I will have to go two weeks before to start my rehearsals. And it's okay. And you? What, what, me? Yeah. No, I, I'm very happy. I, I spent my, my last three months here with my beautiful wife in London, we, we have uh, this apartment in London. I was, uh, of course, many cancellations. I was in Zurich. Uh, I supposed to conduct Otello at the Open House. I did the, the dress rehearsal and the next morning they closed the theater. So we couldn't <laughs> go on stage. <laughs> so I arrived. Uh, after was it a good dress rehearsal? rehearsal? Well, yes, yes. I mean, at least better, uh, I, better I, I heard the... Uh, because yes. good concert also means bad concert, so you. Oh you yeah, got the fine. No, oh, very good. No, and of course uh, it was a uh, strange time because now it's more than uh, three months. Uh, also, I, I suppose also for all of us, no, just the thing of sleeping in the same bed, no, it makes a big difference, and also a perception of just breathing and uh, just have different timing. And then I started to, okay, easily study when when there was the realization of uh, long-term cancellation. Uh, uh, there was a sort of, okay, enjoying, of course, the time off, but also studying uh, like as a phase because there was no actual goal to study for. No, there was a different kind of uh, study. I think I, I, I said a lot of the piano and just reading through repertoire or just, you know, also operatic repertoire, just the mumbling and singing a little bit. Uh, but it was also a good time, I think, uh, just to recharge the battery, to rethink about everything. And now I think following um, what's happening around the world, uh, what it's really fascinating for me is about this reprogramming and about keeping uh, a, a fresh mind on, 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 on the programs, you know, which is different, I know around the world for rules, no? for social distancing, for sanification, for uh, um, uh, reprogramming also in terms of form, uh, because uh, sometimes it's not allowed to have uh, intermission no? for the audience no? because of assemblies uh, uh, during intermission. So uh, this is really different in every part of the, of the country. So in terms of programming, I'd like to have a thought you now between us, you know, because it seems to me like if we are allowed only to programs by groups, for example, in some countries, like only strings and then only winds, and then also keeping separate um, positions on stage you now for them. Um, uh, what are the ideas? Because it seems like this reduced orchestration programs cover like the 20 or 25% of all our symphonic repertoire. And if all the orchestras in the world are going to cover that repertoire, no? no, it means that we need to be even more creative in a way, just to find, for example, in, in the string repertoire pieces, no? something new. And in this sense, uh, also Dalia, I know that you are a keen ambassador uh, of contemporary music as well. 
No, so maybe in this sense also uh, thinking about arrangements from uh, some other from uh, uh, big orchestration, but also new figures can can come in, and also uh, as a second topic that I want to touch is the relationship, of course, with the audience, because uh, at the moment, of course, we are allowed to have only a small audience. And then if the situation keeps going on for uh, at least, for example, in America, we know that it will go on for at least uh, the end of this year, you know? and maybe things will change in 2021. But we need to have a connection with the audience, and that's why also we are using a lot more Social media and uh, you know uh, concerts uh, on uh, on um, internet platforms. I myself had to, uh, I played uh, some and recorded some basses at the piano and then and then an instrumental or a singer sang on the bass. Now, but of course that's something that I really don't want to do for the rest of this month. No, uh, so I ju I just like to to have a round of thoughts about these two topics and. Uh, you know, as music directors and, uh, you know, having fixed position, how we can plan and, uh, and what are the best ideas in this sense. So, again, whoever wants to speak first, go. <laughs> Dalia, go. <laughs> <laughs> Why me first? <laughs> I don't know, but, but if you want, you can pass. Maybe maybe a pass. I, I want to listen first. <laughs> okay. So I, I I can I can tell just few few words. Uh, for me, it's very very difficult to think uh, about uh, the next pro uh, reprogrammation uh, from September till December in Detroit, no USA. It's a very very crazy time, and. Uh, for now, I'm prog I'm uh, I'm thinking about uh, something with not more than twenty or tw twenty five people on stage, and uh, it's so difficult <laughs> to 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 think a, a program for me. It's so, so difficult, and uh, I'm uh, I'm discovering uh, uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, different pieces that uh, I never I never studied because uh, I I'm a conductor that you know I I, I love uh, big orchestras <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> for me it's so difficult to to conduct uh, uh, Vivaldi maybe no and uh, but now I I'm uh, thinking uh, not just uh, the arrangement uh, about Mahler or something like that. That also maybe uh, Gershwin, uh, the original version of uh, Rhapsody in Blue, on uh, not just uh, I I I love uh, different uh, different organic and not uh, only strings on only brass only uh, but I I can understand that uh, it's so so difficult to to plan uh, uh, this kind of concert but. Uh, Maybe we can find a different solution for uh, maybe in uh, in Detroit we plan uh, uh, probably 60 minutes uh, concert without uh, intermission and uh, maybe we can uh, with uh, six or seven pieces uh, we can uh, use all the the orchestra player. Uh, you mean divided organic. by divided by groups? Yeah, with different organics, uh, and uh, but it's uh, I I understand that uh, it's so difficult to to, to find uh, something uh, really really interesting uh, uh, for not not just for me but uh, for the audience and for the musicians, and uh, this is so so difficult. In uh, in Italy now is a little different. I have uh, to, to, to start uh, in, uh, in Verona and maybe different uh, other, other cities here in Italy. And, uh, but now in open air is different no? because we have more, uh, more space, more seats. Uh, and now for the audience, uh, maybe 
in Verona, maybe 3,000. I don't understand. 1,000, 3,000, 7,000. I, I, <laughs> I didn't understand, <laughs> but maybe. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, we are, we are uh, speaking about uh, real uh, music with the real organic no? that uh, we love. In USA, it's so, so, so difficult till uh, probably till December. And maybe from January, we hope we'll, it will change something because uh, in three months, four months programmation, we can cover all this uh, kind of uh, uh, music yeah, with, me, with the small... Uh, yeah, let me ask something. Of course, we're speaking about great orchestras, but uh, are you concerned about all the months of inactivity and uh, thinking about programming in terms of... Uh, uh, growing uh, again confidence in the playing from the beginning so planning something uh, like a crescendo no or something uh, made it smoother and known and just go little by little no then, we of are course, now, yeah yeah now we are planning uh, with uh, bigger and bigger till december but uh, no one knows what happened and uh, we have plan uh, plan a plan b and plan c because it's impossible to know, and no one knows the, the next rules. Yeah. So it's just living day by day. Yeah. And be, and be, and be flexible. But for example, <laughs> Robert, right, Robert, you already started, no? My first question, and I didn't ask you before, was how was the feeling also after all these months? I mean, also, from your players, no, not all, not also physically on you, and uh, and uh, you know what's the feeling of staying on putting yourself on the podium again uh, after may, so many weeks, no, and uh, and again, uh, what's your feeling uh, with the programmation and with uh, um, the audience? Uh, how can I say the audience uh, uh, embracing the audience again? Yeah, um, I want to actually. Yeah, can I give you a, an idea? Can I offer you just a, a thought, maybe for Detroit? Sorry? Can I offer you an idea for Detroit? Sure. Just knowing Detroit a bit, as since I live in Ann Arbor, uh, you mentioned a very accurate point, which is how do you manage to service the people of, I mean, Detroit is a very large area. Uh, the metropolitan area is massive. And you can only manage so many things inside of the, the concert hall of the Detroit Symphony. And let's say you can only manage 200 people in the audience. So for an American orchestra, this is kind of catastrophic. It's impossible to manage since they, on the best of circumstances, or 35% of their operating budget comes from ticket sales, on the best of circumstances. So it's not possible. But one nice thing about Detroit is, and that the Detroit Symphony has done in the past, which uh, has been these community concerts where they go out to different churches and different places where the orchestra goes and plays. Perhaps one way of fixing, uh, getting around the problem is to take the orchestra to one hour programs. And in, let's say in, in your concert hall, they do a five o'clock, a seven o'clock and a nine o'clock. And then the or other half of the orchestra with the assistant conductor is at another venue doing the other half of the concert and you can in one day you still sub service all of your subscribers in the same moment but they're getting a different project and that they're able to switch out could be a way of doing that which would you know the only disadvantage is you can't photocopy yourself and be in both places but actually as far as you know american orchestras detroit symphony being always this you know this idea about educating and being uh, giving to the community uh, especially yeah. with the sphinx program and things like that it could prevent provide you new opportunities to be able to train and educate people and give greater inclusion and greater access to, to the orchestra where they normally wouldn't have it yeah, it could be a great idea yeah, yeah. um I have so to pay you for the copyright ah, no take <laughs> it take it uh, so uh, w when it comes to the, the issue of programming, by the way, um, you know, I have a very good partnership with, with Boozy and Hawks. Uh, just somehow I end up using a lot of their music. So I, I actually asked them, 
to, co uh, to compile an entire uh, list of everything they have under their catalog that is for under 30 musicians and everything in their catalog under 50 musicians so that I could look at that from the new music standpoint. Because of course, uh, you know, I could talk about both John Adams' chamber symphonies, I could talk about some Zanakis, I could talk about Ligeti, Melodian, which is for 21 players, I could talk about many different things. So wanting to have a complete and conclusive list of that from that publisher, that's been very helpful. And, um, and actually I know a good friend of mine, Hakan Hardingberger, who's a trumpeter in Mama, he asked a lot of his composer friends to write him little etudes. Um, so H.K. Groover wrote him one and a whole bunch of other composers have been doing that. Brett Dean, for example, who was in quarantine, wrote one for him as well. And he's planning on putting them all together on, on digital platform. So talking about an audience, another way of dealing with that. So in, in the case of Daniele, to answer your question, the, when we, when the Mamo Symphony disbanded right after the last concert, it was quite unsure whether we were going to even be allowed to come back together and barely managed to do it. When we came back together, which was only just a couple of days later, uh, the sensation was remarkable because it was the idea that we had, we were about to have something that mattered so much to us taken away from us, which was to perform our voices as musicians. And, um, so yes, in the first hour, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of uncertainty. Do we wash the hands? Do we do the elbow bump? Do we, where do we, what, 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 what? All of the, the logistical things. But you know, we musicians, we're, we're very flexible people. You know, they're, you, I mean, look at us. I mean, they're used to, poor, poor instrumentalists are used to following us ridiculous, capricious conductors on a accelerando, rollantando, fermata longer than usual more quiet, more loud. So, I mean, writ small, they're able to follow us like that. Writ large, they're able to navigate something as complicated as the entire circumstances being different, such as being two meters apart, having the winds isolated in little plastic containers, like little aliens and stuff like that, which is what we have in Spain. And um, the, where the willpower is there, there's a way to manage it. And I'm, I'm absolutely certain of that. And now when you don't have the audience in the hall, I have taken the position when it came to Malmo and also in the Basque Country that actually I speak at the beginning of the broadcast if they're live or I do a pre-recorded thing. Just that act of speaking to the people is important. I mean, me personally, and Daniel, you know this, I, I really can't stand that whole divide between the conductors and the audience and people in general. I mean, I don't see myself as anything special. I'm just a person who happens to do a great job and uh, like an amazing job, but that, that's, that's nothing to do with me. It just has to do with, you know, the art form is better than me. So um, talking to people has been very helpful. And when we do the live concerts, I go back afterwards and see where the people were commenting. And I actually go back and I comment back to them. And I asked the orchestra to do the same thing. And that's just another way of trying to bridge that gap that physically isn't, isn't possible to bridge. I mean, when we are in contact with each other and we can feel the empathy, we can feel the aggression, the love, the pain, whatever it is. Yes, we can get something through the computer or we can get through something through this distanced type of music making, but Completely how much more can you offer by actually communicating it very verbally? And I think that there's a lot to be said for that. And I think we conductors uh, have an obligation, we have an and also a possibility to be able to bridge that. And I think it actually could make the moment more special for the audiences because they don't generally have that much of an access to us. And, um, you know, I yeah, sometimes somebody says something I don't particularly like, but I, I don't, it doesn't bother me. The fact that they're engaging with me at all is, is something I'm happy for. So. Yeah, I understand, I understand. And do you feel different in the way you communicate with your musicians? If you have a smaller ensemble, if you have just a string orchestra, even a reduced the string orchestra, uh, you, you, you feel because Somehow, of course, the perception can also be, you know, generally, if it's so small ensemble, we can do it by ourselves. 
<laughs> also now we can relate. So in this sense, there is, I mean, I, I, I adored, um, for example, the concert on the 1st of May that the Berliner Philharmoniker made uh, with uh, Kirill Petrenko. It was uh, the religious version of Malafour. And it was also a message, of course. And I myself am programming in Ulster, starting from August, uh, starting from a small ensemble, going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. No? But my experience is once you start to program small, no? by uh, it's very hard to, to have, for example, all the brasses playing, for example, if, if you're dividing group, the percussions also, no? how to involve them. So we are also playing a lot of chamber music and in some of it, I'll, I'll dare to play the piano also in some of those pieces, just to have you know pieces for winds also, not to, to engage. But I mean, in this sense, in this few months, you know, the role of the conductor, you no, know, with these small ensembles, you no, know, can be a little bit tricky. Mm. Maybe we are we are certainly the lucky ones because we have already um, um, a deep relationship with our musicians, you now being uh, chief conductors. You no, know? but what are your thoughts about it? Well, it depends on the size of the orchestra, of course. I mean, for my advice to anybody who's thinking to do these, that they're going to be broadcast, don't... I know musicians will say, oh, but we are this type of symphony orchestra. We don't want people to see us playing this small repertoire. The question isn't about your profile. That's not the question. COVID-19 has done us a great favor in this regard. Go to hell with your profile. It's all about what you're supposed to do as an artist. It's about presenting the greatest art form ever created by humanity to the people and to elevate them and to elevate yourself and show empathy and show compassion and, 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 and the capacity to come together and do separate things. And so um, all of those contracts, force majeure, whether we can change the program and the rehearsal order three months before and all of these rules, those rules were made for a time when everything is normal and nothing is normal now. But what is normal? What is more amazing? I feel this personally for myself. I can't, sometimes I'm, I come to an engagement and I'm like, yeah, I promised to do this piece two years ago, but I want to do something else today. I want to conduct a Beethoven symphony today. I woke up and I feel that. Now it's possible to do that a little bit, a little bit, you know? And, and I think that that's fantastic. And then the people say, well, we're worried about the audience buying tickets. No, that's not the point. The people who already have the, you know, the, the addiction to our art form, they just want it. They just yeah. want it. They just need sure. it. Not that they don't, that, oh, you're playing Beethoven again. Oh, you're playing a Mendelssohn symphony. I haven't seen that one time in the six weeks during the, during the lockdown that one person said, oh, why this? Because it's, it's special because it has always been special. It's just now we almost lose the chance to do it all together. And so um, repeating a piece of music the next week, so who cares? Do it. Yeah. That really, I mean, that's been, maybe I'm too glib about it, but that's maybe how I managed to get through these last few weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I don't know. I don't care about that. And then people say, oh, but you know, your profile is a Mahler conductor. I don't care. I'm a musician. I want to, I conduct Soldier's Town and I did the narration myself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to say personally, of course, this is very exciting in its way because I have also many things of the repertoire that I'd like to bring and uh, I have the opportunity to three months in advance, go. Also, also Dahlia, uh, w do you have also some of, the, of this repertoire no, that, you know, you are keen to do and jump on in this situation of flexibility. Well, listen. Uh, so interesting to, <laughs> to listening to to all your your thoughts. Um, I, in generally, think of this uh, time now getting slowly back back to business like a huge opportunity, actually. And I've I've always spoken uh, for personally that. Uh, I'm sometimes lacking in the big symphony orchestra repertoire, a small repertoire, or like even let's talk about Baroque music, it just has disappeared, kind of. And I, I feel that this is finally an opportunity where uh, I can 
I can work uh, more with the intimate group of people, smaller group of people, and then expand as you as you want. And I never had even um, like in general in my philosophy is when I have a bunch of hundreds of people that uh, sometimes you want to use them all for some major big stuff, but also there should be courage to, to do because of the good music, you know? And now suddenly when we are in this situation, I'm actually really happy because I can do so many pieces that are sometimes so difficult to program, even operas. Let's talk, for example, Kaiser von Atlantis from Ullmann. You know, this kind of pieces. I mean, there's enormous amount of great music, old, new, you know, it's just a play. For the Britain chamber operas, like Rape of Lucretia, Billy, you know, um, yeah. Sorry, I can't remember the other I mean, yeah, yeah, we can spend like, like hours, but there's so much of great music and I'm actually really inspired by uh, that I finally uh, uh, don't have to pursue musicians that can we do actually this piece that actually needs the 10 musicians. And then after the break, we do the Shostakovich because it has this link, you know, and people and many times orchestras want just to involve everybody. And this dynamics is sometimes something that I think we should maybe keep from this time in future. And then secondly, uh, in Finland, uh, of course, uh, when this lockdown started, what was really a great thing that many orchestras continued to play chamber music. So string quartets, uh, quintets, sexets, and of course the conductors were not, were, we were not needed there. But uh, nevertheless, I think that has done really good to many orchestras and to many musicians that they finally can uh, have time and possibility to work without the, all the stress, weekly stress that they have and really be involved in the chamber music. And this is something also that I think we, I think it has done good for the musicians and something to, to keep with us um, for, for later. And, uh, and um, yeah, how to say, uh, for the last, uh, last my thought on this topic still is that of course, uh, very worried about American orchestras uh, at this moment when you're reading and I'm worried uh, very much also what will go on in, in UK and when we come back and with a little bit this uh, messy, apparently messy everything situation in politics and with, uh, yeah, and how it all affects people. And I know that uh, many people are having really tough time, especially on the freelance um, areas. Uh, though in in uh, Scandinavia, I can say that uh, mostly ev all our governments have been really great, and it seems that there's all the time activity in the classical music field, and people are really, really, how to say, with a good spirit, uh, and uh, it's it has been really, I don't know, it has been nice to see that people haven't been like totally miserable, that it has been so so active in many ways, yeah. That's very interesting. And also uh, the great thing I think about this new open blank page in front of us, at least for the next few months, is that I also receive feedback from the musicians, uh, players no? who said, this can be a fantastic opportunity to cover some of the most exposed uh, portion of our repertoire, meaning for example, working on some neutral uh, field and territory, like Haydn symphonies, you know? or something completely new, like, uh, you know, again, uh, some commissions from uh, composers, you know? or something like uh, thinking small, of course, you know, always, you know, thinking of, uh, always keeping in mind that the small sides of the orchestra, and once all the groups of the orchestra will be over and just uh, all the, the chamber orchestra sides can be together, uh, I mean, the opportunity to work on something not planned, but again, still great music and to maybe find again what is the most pure maybe way no, of playing together with the classic form, or as you said, uh, Dalia, before, the, the Baroque you know, repertoire. No? Now, I know that touching Baroque maybe is more for, nowadays it's more for specialists, yes? Uh, maybe no, not so I, much. I, I yeah, you don't think so. 
Yeah, no, no. But I didn't. I mean, I do. I, I, I have the tendency to conduct back and to conduct uh, other repertoire. No, even if I'm not considered a specialist. No, about yeah, you know. Heard, this is music, like anything else. It's it's somehow uh, strange that, uh, of course. Uh, I don't know really when is it 70s, 80s when there started to become more period orchestras. It's somehow the repertoire just vanished from the symphony orchestra. I think we should come back to that. It's phenomenal music. I mean, su such a free, free music. I think anything is possible, and I think the many orchestras are actually wishing to have that that uh, that uh, music actually in their repertoire. Yeah, that's you know, Daniel, at least. Yes, yeah, you're please. Listening. Uh, you're mentioning, uh, like in, in, in Uskari, I did all, almost all the Mendelssohn symphonies during these broadcasts. Mm -hmm. And we covered a couple of Mozart symphonies. But one of the things that, to answer one of your questions, or hopefully give an idea, for example, it's difficult. I mean, I think all of us are dealing with the same problem. Are we going to have half audiences, quarter audiences? Are we going to, what, how many people can we have on stage? Uh, what is the size of everything and can we manage to get to our subscribers? Can we double the comedy? So I created a, a, a pretty much a custom built opening of my season here in Uskadi. And what we're opening our season with is a Schubert cycle. All the symphonies in two weeks over, I think it's effectively like 14 concerts. Mm -hmm. But the rehearsal period will be before and what that allows us to do, and I split the orchestra into two different groups. So it's you know, orchestra red and orchestra blue, and they cover the intermittent symphonies. And so what I have to do is conduct all of these in one. Good luck. In, you know, <laughs> which is fine. But um, we rehearse before. And then what it allows us to do is say in San Sebastian, at five o'clock, we do one concert for half of our subscribers who are allowed to come, and let's say the number is we're allowed to have 50%, fine. Then we are repeating that same concert one day later, exactly the same program in the same hall, and then that allows us to fill, fulfill the other 50%. If they allow full percentage of the audience, then that allows other people from the same city to be able to attend that concert the next day. And if that allows, if we go down to a quarter of the audience, it still allows us to be able to cover everything. So it's a type of project that allows um, for the excitement of everybody to come. And it also is the type of project that allows us to mitigate the different numbers of people. And what it is, is it's conclusive. It's one large thing that the entire orchestra is doing. It doesn't seem piecemeal, but it's one big, big project. And that is another way. And what I kept saying uh, with my orchestra here is that it's a way of trying to heal the wounds of the separation of society that in this way, even if I go to my one concert on Thursday and my friend in Pamplona goes to the other concert on Saturday, we have a dialogue between us as a shared experience. Even though we weren't in the same space, we experienced the same composer, the same music, the same cycle, and we have a way of dialoguing in that. And so we, then we plan on trying to have some internet discussions and things like that where people can engage. But that's a way that we've managed to, that um, the programming, I've managed to throw something in there that solves the problem for the for the beginning of the season where it's the most amount of questions available whether we have depending on what we have and it immediately reduces the strain on the orchestra so that we're using a smaller orchestra throughout the whole thing so it allows us to be able to comfortably manage the distance and all of those different things and if we're allowed to be right next to each other great if we're not fine if we're allowed to have the trombones but we need to keep them three meters away fine there's enough space on so it really just like it was the thing i came up with uh, to be able to solve the problem of the all the questions in the beginning so all we did is double all the concerts and leave them all open and then as we know what circumstances are we sell it according to what we're allowed to and we have something to offer that is concluded you know concrete but you know um as an american who is not there right now um and looking at what's going on in my country and what's happening to the musicians in my country. There's one um, thing I think that, I don't know how one would do it, but there has been a, a long tradition of people saying that orchestras are an elitist art form. I mean, that's in Europe, of course, to a certain extent, but in the United States, it's very much a, an expression. And orchestras um, are constantly trying to break down that 
barrier and that boundary and and engage with minority groups with uh, various different types of communities and, and and doing all the things that they do with education and i think in a weird way even though the orchestra is not able to do its normal function as there's so much uncertainty in the united states and so much um fear and and chaos I think it could be an amazing opportunity for an orchestra that could find a way to assemble in some capacity, even it doesn't matter if it's a string quartet, it doesn't matter in what capacity, but to assemble for the people writ large. I mean, I know the system's not really well designed for that, but there could be an opportunity now where there's a vacuum of artistic output to reset the conversation in the United States to gain a new element of relevance to people in what we do as artists, as musicians. And to, I mean, basically, you know, the microphone is empty, nobody's talking through it. So if somebody can find a way to get to the microphone, whatever message you have is the message. And I would love it to be the Detroit Symphony, I'd love it to be Chicago, anybody, but now could be the moment to find a way, and it doesn't need to be big. Just to go up to the microphone yeah. is pretty courageous enough. I don't know. Just a yeah, 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 no, no, I agree. Yeah, they do. I suppose you, you share this thought. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. It's uh, not not easy, not easy, but I think uh, also we we can uh, we we can use this this time uh, to do. In a different to make a, in a different way music uh, also to uh, to study together uh, with our musicians not to find a different a different uh, way to 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 find a special sound uh, because we we have to make music for for all the people for for uh, the community for a educational project uh, and it's not easy but uh, i think we uh, in this time we can find uh, we can find uh, a different way to listen each other also if uh, we are not not so close on stage and uh, yeah i completely agree it's not it's very very difficult but uh, uh, we are working about that also also yeah. for an educational project uh, for uh, for the people for the community we are working about that and uh, but also day by day because we have a different plan because uh, we, we are waiting maybe today 20 people tomorrow 30 we hope okay and yeah. then <laughs> we continue but uh, yes this is the the, the the right way and uh, we have to continue to keep in touch with uh, our audience I, I think just just uh, I thought, uh, just uh, this uh, this thing no, about, about the lockdown. All all the people, all the people, uh, uh, not not just musicians, not but uh, all the people uh, read books. Uh, uh, so uh, what, watch the uh, concept uh, in streaming uh, by streaming, uh, and uh, read uh, poetry. It it seems uh, it seems that uh, that people need. Culture, no. Without culture, it is impossible to live. And uh, we hope that when we go go back in a normal, a normal way, I think uh, in a normal life. Sorry, I think people want immediately to come back uh, in a concert hall. I hope because uh, because they need the culture. Culture, no. We need culture, but uh, we need to share the culture, uh, like a concert, but a museum. Uh, and also restaurant because the food is culture for for Italian people especially. No, <laughs> we agree. We agree. <laughs> but oh, I think it's 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 impossible to live without culture. The the people need culture to live and to improve the, the themselves, and we have to give this to them. Yeah, no, I I agree, and I think the perception is the same. Of course, the people need that, and uh, we are waiting not to restore the normality, notwithstanding, of course, the difficulty of the situation. I am afraid we are running uh, out of time, but uh, I mean, just uh, last thoughts of this uh, conversation, something 
hopefully positive. I feel positive. I mean, what it comes out of this is, of course, uh, the situation is dramatic in a way, but it presents also unique opportunities. So I'm really uh, looking forward uh, to the future in this sense with my orchestras, uh, but also as a guest conductor with uh, guest engagements now to to navigate into this new situation. And, uh, and I mean, I may sound a bit naive in a way, no? but of course, uh, as Robert was saying, no? but between the lines now, I could, I could feel that at the end, yes, you have the microphone and the message goes, no? but of course, I mean, we are, we are touching great music and great messages by fantastic composers. So in this way, we are, lucky and uh, well i mean we have already all what we need no we have already the help no of this great music written and we are just you know so anything you want to add just to say ciao and to end our well, discussion it's really nice talking to you all <laughs> All, and it's uh, almost like a therapy session, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like a psychology, psychologist. Psycholo 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 yeah, exactly, because uh, lately, of course, nobody of us has really met each other and uh, not so many of our colleagues. So it's it has been really nice talking. And uh, we just, you know, we all keep a uh, flag high and it will end eventually. And it has touched every single of us in a way or another. And uh, so, in a way, we are all together in this, and and someday it's uh, you know we will we are moving still somewhere, and I'm uh, and of course I wish for everybody to stay healthy and in good spirits, and you know, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You know, for Robert. me, the the I think of a couple of things. Whoever's watching this uh, and engaging it. Presumably other conductors, maybe other artists and musicians. And the it's it's it for me the whole the whole issue comes down to a question of purpose. It comes down to a question of how do you see your place in the world? And for me, I see music's place, my place, I think our place, as a means of being able to give expression to the aspects of people's lives that they cannot articulate in words. How often can we sit here talking about these issues and are a little bit short for the words? The pains and the feelings that have come to all of us in this time are impossible to put into words. And that is where music comes in. It is a way for us to be able to come to terms with what has happened, who we are now, who we were before, who we can become. And I think as musicians, as artists, our social contract to the people to leave a lasting impression and lasting legacy of improvement of change has nothing to do with a sort of like an, like an aesthetic idea, but has much more to do with the humanistic idea of bringing everybody back together. And if you run into a, a, a dead end, just go around it, find another way, just go another way because there is always a way. And it doesn't matter if you have to reprogram it 25 times. And if you have to stay up till three o'clock in the morning learning a new piece, do it because the world needs it. The world requires it. And we have to find a way forward in that way. I like it. I agree. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, there, say ciao. Ciao, ciao. Thank you for, uh, <laughs> for invite, invite me. <laughs> It's a, it was a pleasure to be here with all of you. Maybe next time by person is better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and, uh, and I'm sure that uh, in, this, uh, in this strange time, uh, we, can, uh, we can learn something new from this, this uh, strange situation. Maybe in the future, we, we can understand what happened really. And uh, so see you, see all of you and all the uh, our audience uh, to our concert hall. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank oh. you, Daniele. Ciao, thank ciao. you. I want I want to thank you very much for being uh, for this conversation. It was great to see you all. You know? And 
really thank you again for uh, your time and uh, for this evening and uh, for your thoughts. So a big hug. <laughs>